And I justify that Muhammad sallallahu is the last and final messenger whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent for the guidance of mankind. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, verily, the believers are of one brotherhood. Our respected uh, shayukh, respected brothers and sisters, parents and children, friends, I greet you with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It is really indeed a pleasure for me to see all of you here today. This, as you know, is our annual winter dinner, Islamic Institute of Toronto's winter dinner. And although we may not be at the place that we've accustomed to be at the Islamic Institute of Toronto, but the spirit prevails are among us here. And that is the spirit of brotherhood, a spirit of hospitality, of generosity, a spirit of being together at this time of the year, something that we have done for many, many years. And therefore, with a very warm heart, I say to you, welcome, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this evening a beautiful one and a beneficial one. We are indeed honored today to have all of you, and doubly honored to have amongst us an international scholar, an international personality, uh, Dr. Tariq Ramadan. Our program is very simple. We will begin with the recitation of the Quran as it befits any program to begin with. After which, inshallah, we will have an introduction to Dr. Tariq Ramadan by one of our young brothers in this community. We will have the lecture by Dr. Tariq Ramadan, Min al Qalb, Reflections from the Heart, after which I will give you a few minutes of information about the Islamic Institute of Toronto. We will move into dinner. After dinner will be Salat al Isha, inshallah, and then we come back for some entertainment. So without further ado, I have pleasure in calling our young Hafiz al Quran, Brother Asar Khan who will be reciting some verses of the Qur'an from Surah Ash-Shu'ara and these are the verses of the Qur'an from which we have taken the topic Min al that is Reflections from the Heart I invite Brother uh, Afsar to recite the Qur'an A'udhu <laughs> Billahi <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
وجعلني
He's written a number of highly influential works, and I don't want to uh, dwell, but I think it's important that I, I at least go over some of his works and why it's important. And um, I point to just some of the most recent must-reads. So if you haven't already, you have your work cut out for you. Uh, the first is In the Footsteps of the Prophet, which is a fresh look at the life of the Prophet, particularly focusing on the prophetic example as a model for religious practice that ultimately aims at higher ethical and spiritual ends. Uh, second, Radical Reform, Islamic Ethics and Liberation, a higher order sequel to his earlier views on Islamic legal and intellectual reform as expressed in earlier works um, such as Islam, the West, and the challenges of modernity and to be a European Muslim. Um, third, The Quest for Meaning, Developing a Philosophy of Pluralism, a work that takes on some of the most important and central challenges that faces the Muslim community in the West today, uh, regarding secularism, freedom, equality, and religious belief. Um, indeed, it interrogates our fundamental notion of what a society and community is. So it's a very important recent work. Uh, and lastly, the Arab awakening, Islam and the new uh, Middle East. Uh, the work examines the challenges that faces Muslim countries um, uh, in the wake of the awakening and urges all sides to take seriously the problems that confront the development of vi viable modern Islamic uh, democratic system. Uh, I think all these books are available uh, here today. He's currently a professor of uh, contemporary Islamic studies at Oxford University. Uh, he teaches at Oxford's venerated Oriental Institute and also in the Department of Theology and Religion. He's a visiting professor at uh, numerous universities, and he's the director of the Research Center of Islamic Leg Legislation and Ethics, which is an important reason for recent endeavor. It is a true honor and blessing to have him here today. Uh, without further ado, I present to you our speaker, Dr. Tariq Ramadan. <laughs> And it's important to do this 
but it's important not to do only this, not to be focused and obsessed with what shall I say if I am asked, but what should I understand when I am alone with Allah. And you come to the, the experience of the Prophet and you get the sense of this uh, journey. Allah took him from a very specific situation and step by step helped him to understand through the revelations the very essence of our religion. And in fact, the power, the strength that came to the Prophet as a Mukhtar, the chosen, as a Mustafa, the purified, as a Habib, the beloved, is in fact this understanding that Allah SWT took him and step by step made him understand the essence of Islam and this message, which in fact is a liberating message. You don't understand Islam if you don't understand that the very essence of this religion is liberation. But liberation from what to get what? The first thing which is important, you all notice that the Prophet was in Nabi al-Ummi. And Nabi al-Ummi meant, and this was known by the people, that the Prophet didn't know how to write and didn't know how to read. And Allah after when he reached was 40 years when Jibreel came to him first. But before this, the Prophet was unsettled. He was not happy. <clears throat> not happy with what he saw in his society. He was not happy with the idols, he was not happy with the answer. And he, he was seeking truth and, 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 and looking for the right answer. And once, when he was on his own in the cave, Ar Hira, he was in Ar Hira and Jibreel came to him. Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and asked him to read. And he said, I can't read. He repeated, read, I can't read. And then the third time, this is the first verses that were, were revealed to the Prophet ﷺ in Surah 96. And this is a very important point. That very often we go to this and we go too fast in understanding this. In fact, the very start of the message of Islam was making the Prophet understand with his mind and with his being that he can do things that he thought he cannot do. In fact, as a human being, I can't read. I am not equipped. I don't know how to read. And Jibreel said, read. Say, I can't. I don't have the power. I don't have the knowledge. Read. I can't. Read this Quran. Meaning that if you understand the very essence of Islam is the first thing that was converted with the knowledge of Jibreel and Jibreel coming to the Prophet is the self-perception. What you think you can't do alone with him, you can. This is the power of faith. You can do it. You can do it this year of faith. So, when he came to Islam, when he came to the first revelation, and when he, the Prophet was called as the messenger, is get it right. That the very essence of faith is to change first the knowledge and the way you look at yourself. It's converting yourself to your heart that what you think at your level I can't do, with him you can, and this is the way you have to look at yourself. In fact, the very essence of faith is not look at yourself 
through your weakness, but look at yourself through your potential power. Read means this is the potential power. The problem that in our education we forget this and we start our education very often by saying to our kids, to say to our children, to speak about this life by thinking that when you come to faith, the first thing that you have to look at when it comes to yourself are your weaknesses. This is not the message of Islam. The message of Islam is what is coming with your heart when you are close to Allah Taala is to be very positive about yourself. And this is what Lord Man said to his son. And he should put it in there. You have to thank Allah. What does it mean when he is teaching his face to him is with your heart, what you should start with is to say thank you. So if I start by saying thank you, what does it mean in the way I look to myself or at myself? What does it mean when I look at myself? It means to say thank you, you have to start by thanking Allah for what He's giving you, not what is missing. The message, the power of this face is a positive look, a positive perception of yourself. So, the man is saying this to his son, and Muslims should get it from an Islam, the message of Islam. Be positive. Be positive and understand that the one who sent the Prophet, I say Islam, is not only Allah. It's the one that we also call Al Rahman, who is telling us through him. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ means this message is positive. Open your heart, something good is coming. يَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا Make it easy and don't make it difficult. More importantly, بَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُنَفِّرُوا بَشِّرُوا means good news come. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا come. Oh, you who believe, come. There is a good news here. And this good news is all about change the way you look at yourself. What yesterday you thought you can't do, now you can. With him. This miracle. So this is the first conversion. This is something which was what? The Prophet has to slam being isolated in the cave, being alone, coming back to his wife. Say Zambeluni, Zambeluni. Is this right? Is this wrong? Is it coming from the devil? Is it coming from Allah? And his wife, with her heart, comforting him, it cannot be the devil because you are good. Look at all what happened. The Jibreel telling the Prophet and saying to him, Be sure that with Allah you can read. The Prophet being shaken, going to his wife, and what his wife did. Is protecting him with his qualities, not his weaknesses. You can, because this is positive, because you are good. Everything which has to do with faith is to convert your sight into don't look first at your weaknesses, acknowledge your strength and your qualities. And if you come with a slam with this, this is why you are positive. Start by thinking. Not by looking at what is missing. And if you want to reform yourself, the further thing that you have tasgiat in nafs, if you want to go to something which is reforming yourself, you should understand that you are equipped. When, for example, you have la tazim you are not going to bear anything that is not your responsibility. It means that your responsibility, your burden, this is something that you can. There, because this is the way you have been uh, created by Allah, so it's all positive. Positive. You are not going to be asked to do something more than what you can, so you can. And if it is said in the Quran, reform yourself, it means you can. It means look at the positive side. So it's a conversion not based on all oh, my mistakes and my sins, but my potential and my improvement. A very powerful message. And it's coming to your heart. So you have to educate yourself 
through your heart to thank Him, and because you thank Him, your mind looks at your quality. Which is exactly the opposite of what Muslims sometimes are doing when they are teaching Islam to their children. It's all about be scared and look at your weaknesses. Not be well and look at your strength. That you can do this, to be positive. And then you come and you, you go and you follow the journey. And you understand that Allah SWT opened the heart of the Prophet at the way he had to look at himself. Now you think that you are alone, go back to them. And you go back to them with three things. First is the knowledge of God. La ilaha illallah. Second, the book, the revelation, taqwa. This is the book coming to you. And now the powerful love of those who love you as your wife, Khadija, radiallahu anha. So it's all about this. Allah, the Rahman, is sending you a book out of his Rahman, compassion. With this book, you will find the love of your wife and you start now changing the world. Go and change. You can make this. So it's the relationship with Allah plus the love of the people who love you for the sake of Allah and you can make it. If you understand this, this is what started the whole revelation by saying to the Prophet now with this, with this powerful light in your heart, you can change the world. You are equipped, you can face them. Now you have the power to face the powerful in your society. If you get that. If you understand the power of this message. And from where the power was coming. That the second step was for the Prophet ﷺ to get something which is change the way you look at the world. And all the first verses that we had that were revealed at the beginning were to change his sight, to change the way he was looking at the world. So this is why you have washams, washamfesh, wadduha, all this is what? Look at nature now. What do you see in this nature? What do you see with the mountains? What do you see with the sky? What do you see with the moon? What do you see with the sun? What is this? This is the power of God and the signs that the love that you need to change the world is the same that He gave to create the world. Look at, the, look at nature is sending messages. And the more you look at this power in nature, the, the more you understand that the one who has the power to create all this has the power to make it, to make you change the world. It's the same God, one land. So sometimes when you go outside and you bear the last message, the Quran and Karim, that is coming from Allah, you understand that this is something which is very powerful. And by looking at the world, not only with your eyes, but with your heart. So this is what you have, the difference between the people who have a, 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 a heart that is open and alive, and people who have a dead heart, are the people who have the Quran in their heart. And the people who look at the world and can understand the, the message of Allah through the science of nature. And what you have also. Yes, uh, what is the verse again? Is Rahman Adam al Quran, you know the verse, and then in Shams wal Qamar bi Husban wa Najm wa Shabar yesterday. So this is once again something which is look at the world with your eyes, understand the meaning of the world with your heart. Your heart is telling you something. So it's opening the heart towards thank Allah and opening the heart to a nature, thank Allah for what He gives you. He gives you this nature, this creation. This is Sahar Alakum. Sahar Alakum. He made all this for you to understand that this is His power that He is giving you through nature and through His sons. So this is the second thing that we see in the revelation that the Prophet was looking at the world and all the verses were telling him the world is a gift. Say thank you. Say thank you. But in fact, you have to look at this, that this is also another center of power. So if you 
think about this message, it's all connected with the power of faith. First, the power of faith that is changing you. The power of faith that is changing the way you look at the world. You look at the world and you understand in all these there are signs that Allah is sending you. I created all this for you and now you have to, own, to use all this power with your heart to change. Look at the world with your heart and understand that even the stars, even the trees, even the elements are prostrating to Allah. There is nothing in the world which is not prostrating to Allah, but you don't understand their prayers. If you look at them with your mind, but you get it if you look at them with your heart. So it's open your heart now. Allah is talking to you, open your heart. You should be with the revelation exactly as you should be when you open the Quran. You make wudu, you open the Quran. You have two ways of reading the Quran. You read, it, you read it with your mind or you open it with your heart. And the way you read the Quran with your heart means that sometimes the Quran is not talking to your mind but attracting and taking your heart. Exactly when we heard our brother reading the Quran now, the voice, the way you recite the Quran is an, a, an open channel to your heart, not only your mind. You have some people who don't understand Arabic. The only fact that they aren't, they, 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 they can listen to the Quran, it's opening something in their heart. So this is the power of faith. So this is what came first the Prophet And then third conversion, which was in fact something which is very strange. He's alone. He got the first revelation, change the way you look at yourself. Second, change the way you look at the world. And now, change the way you look at the society. And you might think that power is coming with the powerful people, the wealthy people, are the people who have power. The princes and the kings and the, the presidents, these are the powerful. That's not what Islam is saying. And you have in Surah Al-Fajr, كَلَّا بَنْ لَا تُقْرِدُونَ الْيَتِينَ وَلَا تَحَاضُونَ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْلًا لَمَّا وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا With your mind, you like money. But if you open your heart, you will understand something. That the people who are changing the world are not the powerful, but very often the poor people. This is it. But all the messengers, all of them, from the first to the last one, all the way to Abraham and Moses and Jesus, the people who follow them first and give them the power of change, but not the rich, but the poor. Change the way you look at the society. Don't try to talk to the, the rich and the powerful to change. Be close to the poor and the last to the fall. These are your people. And you will have people telling you, you are followed by the poor, the less powerful. And in fact, the power of this message is to take the poor, to take the marginalized, to take the oppressed, and in the name of this message of love to say, this is what we have to do is to change the society. Look at all the verses at the end of the Quran is all coming with the poor people. It's the power of generosity and justice, not the power of money. You heard the verse? Think that money and children are going to make it? That's nothing. The power is convincing, pure heart. And pure heart is when you serve the poor, you educate your heart. And when you serve the poor and educate your heart, this is the power of faith. Third conversion. Third conversion that is coming from this very moment that the Prophet got the first revelation, first change the way you look at yourself. Second, change the way you look at the world. 
Third, change the way you look at your society. Don't think that the people who are going to change this world are the more powerful. So much so that when we, he, Prophet Islam, once thought that he had to talk to the rich to change the society, Allah SWT talked to him and said, You made a mistake. You thought that to change the society you have to talk to the rich and these poor men who came to ask you about Quran and about Islam, you neglected him. You were wrong. Power is not with these people, it's with him. If you serve him, you serve me. And you serve me, you can change the world. Because if you think that by serving the poor people, the rich, you are going to serve Allah, no. The, the rich people might push you to serve them. The rich, if you serve him, it means that in your intention, it's God, it's Allah, not him. Because he has nothing, but he is something. He has nothing, but he is somebody. And if you serve somebody who has nothing, it means that you might be close to Allah. Change the way you look. So it's coming from your heart. So the way you look at this is the whole dimension of this powerful faith and the power of your face when it comes to change this. But it's not finished. It's not finished. Because when you deal with the poor, you understand that the poor people and the people who are marginalized are treated by authority and power in a way which is not acceptable sometimes. So not only you have to serve them, but la tukrimuna al-yateem. Karamat al-yateem means wa laqad karramna al-yateem. La tukrimuna, it's the same root. Tukrimuna, in wa laqad karramna al-yateem. Every single human being has the same dignity. Now you have to change the way you look at the world. You can't accept any situation where there is a lack of dignity. Go and change the world. This is what was said to the Prophet said. So this is why he came back to his people. Why to go back to these people if you don't have a mission? The mission is not only to be faithful and to have faith for yourself. Be careful with these people who are telling you in the name of a new kind of Sufis, for example, just transform yourself during the night and forget about the world during the day. This is a vicious understanding of Islam. We should not struggle against our own ego in an isolated way because it's still ego-centric. So we have now a type of understanding of I'm struggling with, against my ego in an ego-centric way. Me for myself. With no solidarity. So the, the, the understanding of this false conversion now is that not only you get this and you serve the poor, but you have at the same time to understand that you have to resist. What will be the first resistance, which is part of coming from the heart, that Allah SWT said to the Prophet you come with such a beautiful message of truth. You come with a message that is in fact in Islam. And then Islam means it will be still a message of peace. And still you are going to be attacked. If you understand the power of faith, the first resistance to this attack is not to do what they are doing to you. So if they insult you, you don't insult. You have to change your understanding of power. The power is not to beat the enemy. The Prophet was asking to the companion, who is the strong man among you? So the first understanding with the mind is the strong is the one who beats the enemy. That's strong. That's an intellectual answer. The true answer coming from the heart, the one who is able to master his or her emotions when he's experiencing anger. This is power. So there is a material power, a physical power, and there is the spiritual power. I shed my tongue. I shed my emotion. And this is the way you resist people. And for example, something which is the way you are going to resist the people. And you know, this is a very old tradition. It's in Islam and it was in Christianity. It's when you are insulted, you don't respond. 
And when, for example, he experienced with Abu Bakr Siddiq insults coming from the Ahl al Quraysh, he was not responding. Because if you think that your power is to insult me, that I am going to be so weak as to respond, you don't get it. My power is not to respond to your insult, because this will be as weak as you are. Your insults are showing you weakness. My power is my silence. My power is to go beyond this. Peace. Don't do this, because I'm checking my emotions. The power of faith. Thank you. Are you following? And this is the way the Prophet was asked to react. You are going to be attacked. And he knew this from the very beginning. For first, within weeks and months, he went with Khadija and they went to, to uh, Warqa al Nafal. Warqa al Nafal was telling him, these people are going to throw you away, they are going to attack you. I said, am I going to be attacked with this message? Yes, because this is the fate of all the messengers. You come with peace and they respond with war. What are you going to do? To be as weak as responding, no, you have to resist. And the first weapon that you have is not violence, is not to kill, is to resist to what is wrong with them and to answer with the Quran. وَلَا تُطِيعَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَجَهِدُ الْبِهِينَ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا The big, the greatest jihad is to respond to the attack with the Quran. And what is the Quran? It's not a direct response. Get that right. Sometimes the people are attacking you and they are expecting you to respond to their attack, exactly what they are doing. Don't do that. The Quran is much more powerful than their attack. So sometimes you have to respond beyond their questions and beyond their attacks. So the Quran, the Prophet said, you remember this? If you have uh, uh, studied the, the, the Sirah, the biography of the Prophet very often when he was attacked, he was to put the Quran. So meaning what? I'm not responding to your attacks, I'm responding from the source. And the source is stronger than your weakness. The source is stronger than what you are trying to do to me. My power is coming from the source. In the name. I belong to him. So Wajahid means in the with the Quran respond to the attack. And this is the biggest, so it's an intellectual resistance. Knowledge, it's power. And it's coming with your heart, so be strong. And you have to be courageous. And this is the fifth conversion. If you get this right, if you understand this right, if you know that the meaning of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power and no strength but with God. This hymn is giving me strength. Because I'm not going to, to, to play with my enemy. I'm not going to, to, to uh, respond directly to your attacks. But I'm equipped to come with this power. And then this is coming from where? It's coming from your faith. And it's coming from what? This remembrance that one day you are going back to him. It's coming from Ilit Mi'nan. It's coming from in Nafsul Mutma'inna that I'm assertive. I'm not scared. Musa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, all were facing the enemies. La dakhshawhum wa shawhi. Don't be scared. Don't be frightened. They are going to try to do this. Just be at peace with yourself. If you know me, know yourself. If you know yourself, know your message. If you know the message, don't be scared of the people who are resisting because your message is stronger, more powerful than what they are trying to do. So it's as deep as, in fact, أَفْضَلُ الْجِهَادِ كَلِمَةُ حَقِّ أَمَنْ سُلْطَةٍ جَهَادٍ So the best jihad is the uh, word of truth in front of a tyrant, a transgressor. It's coming from where? That you are able to speak the truth in front of someone who can kill you. And at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لا don't be scared. 
الناس ان الناس جمعوا لك فالاو دو بيبول ار جابين اجينست يو فزادهم ايمانا دي هاف مور ايمان اتس كومينج فروم ذا هارت دو يو ثينك ذات دي ار سكير بات ذات اس اند ذس اول ذس ناو از ذا ستوري اوف ذا بروفيتس فايف سكس كونفرجن That is giving this power of faith, all coming from the heart and this confidence. It the one called Allah. I trust you. Now, let me tell you something. You are Muslim Canadians and Canadian Muslims who live in this society. How much of this do you have in your heart? How much of this power are you experiencing that at the end you understand that you have a mission? And the mission is in Canada. First, whatever is the situation in this society, be confident and be positive about yourself. Be positive. Be positive. If Allah puts you here in this society facing these challenges, if you trust Him, it means that you are able to make it. You are as able to make it as the Prophet was able to make it. This is what I think. You can make it in Canada. This Murabdina, you are as able as him because it is said in the Quran So he is the best example. And as he didn't know how to weep, Allah from Jibreel السلام, gave him the power of doing this. In Canada, as Muslims, you have the power to make it. Don't put yourself as victims. You are not victims. You are tasted and you can make it. Be positive. First conversion. Second, look at the world around you. You have in this country, you know, this nature, this environment, celebrate this. But to celebrate the environment means you have to study. You have to make this yours. You have to, you should know why you have to thank Allah for being in this country. You can keep on thinking about the countries of origin that you left. But you have to convert this into something. Thank Allah for being in Canada. And if you don't know why you have to thank Him, you must maybe start checking and looking for an answer. Why, as Muslims living in Canada, you should now say, thank you, I'm here. And if you can't say thank you, it's not because it's not coming from Allah, it's coming from your weaknesses and your lack of understanding of your own faith in this world. You are not in Canada by accident. You are not. And if you get why you are here, you start thanking. I'm here because there are many things in this society that are even better than in Muslim majority countries. Many things that you can do, many opportunities. Many rights that you have. Go ahead, they thank you and stop working. Second conversion. The third one is about who are you supporting? Who are the people who are close to you? Are you talking to ministers or are you respecting poor people in this society? Are you on the side of the marginalized in Canada or only looking to be respected and to please the powerful? Have you learned from history? Yes or no? Or are you repeating the same mistakes? Are you now serving the poor in Canada, serving the oppressed, showing solidarity, love to all the people who are experiencing anything which has to do with injustice, undignified treatment, anything? You should be on their side. This is Islam. Because this is the way you follow the practice. And it's even more than that. You dreamed that ta'am ala hubbihi. So you do this in the name of Allah because of your love towards Allah. We don't want to be rewarded. We don't want to be thanked. This is what we do because we understand it's coming directly from our connection to Allah. Are you doing this in Canada? Do you get the message? Or are you saying we follow the Prophet not in this teaching? That's the point. It's coming from your heart. Who are the people you are serving? And I will tell you if you serve Allah. If you are useful in this society, you serve here. If you serve yourself, you are far. And some are in Canada to serve themselves, not to serve the society.
The third conversion should come from here, from this, and then more than that, in the way you deal with powerful people in the way you change this society. And this is where, wherever you are, the best way to thank Allah is to serve the people in all the fields. And it has to come with generosity. Feel good and be generous. Give. To wait to the leaders to give. To give to anyone who is in need. To give to your fellow human beings. To give to uh, women who are facing uh, discrimination or violence. We give and we give and we support and we protect. To give to the people here who, who are human beings, they might not be Muslims, but they have dignity, we give, we support and we contribute. This is the way the Prophet ﷺ changed the world. And we have to contribute with this. But there is something which is important and this is my last point. You are not going to reform any society if you don't love the people with whom you live. You are not. Because the way the people are looking at you, they can feel you yourself, you feel, when the people love you or not, like you or not. You feel this. You feel that some people are racist and you can feel this. And some of us as Muslims, we are in this binary vision that we are good, we are Muslims, and then they are not. So there is a lack of this love that is coming from the power of faith. Remember, we, the Prophet have, has been sent as a mercy to the world, and we are following the mission. We should be a mercy. You should be Rahman lil alamin. You should be Rahman lil alamin. But how are you going to be a, 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 a Rahman, mercy, compassion, forgiveness? If your heart are closed, not open. If you come with the mind and you judge, and not with the, 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 the heart and the love. Can you just realize this? And it's a love you should hear. You are not going to complete your face if you don't love love. You don't love. You don't love. For you, fellow human beings, what you love for yourself. If you don't, there is something which is missing in your faith. And then Imam al-Nawawi was saying, we are here talking about the Bukhuwa al-Insaniyya. They said, for the Bukhuwa al-Islamiyya. It's about human beings. So you have to ask yourself, truly, do you love for your fellow human beings what you love for yourself? And if it's not, this is the starting of the truth travel. This is the way you change the way you look at yourself, you change the way you look at the world, you change the way you look at the poor, you change the way you look at power, you change the way you look at wealth, you change the way you look at the society, and you give something. So, in the name of God, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, serve Him, love, and give.